So I mentioned before that generally the addition step for nucleophilic acyl substitution is the slow step. There are some exceptions to this. And this is when you have a poor leaving group. Things that are moderate or strong bases, they will leave very slowly. And that will cause the elimination step to be rate limiting. The main example we will see later on with amide hydrolysis, those poor leaving groups are generally things where nitrogen has either a negative charge in basic solution or is a neutral amine in acidic solution. Those will leave quite slowly and crossing that highest energy transition state will involve pushing out one of these strong bases. So I mentioned also that because step one is slow and rate limiting, we should use something about step one's mechanism or the starting materials for step one to explain the relative rates. So the relative rates of nucleophilic acyl substitution depend on the addition step. And you'll get to the right answer if you always say the best leaving group is going to be the one that reacts the fastest. And it is true that the weakest base or the best leaving group leaves the fastest. But that's during the elimination step. That's during step two. We should say something about the starting material and the electronics at the carbonyl carbon before addition to determine the relative rates of carboxylic acid derivatives. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider the stability of the initial carboxylic acid derivative by drawing resonance structures. Specifically, we'll draw Zwitter ionic resonance structures. Zwitter ionic resonance structures, rem remember, those mean that you have formal charges that are separated in the structure, but they sum to zero net charge. So let me show you some examples of these resonance forms. Of course, if you increase the stability of a carboxylic acid derivative, you're going to decrease its reactivity. And we'll find that the stability of the carboxylic acid derivative is going to track with or increase with the stability and the relative importance of its Zwitterionic resonance structure. If you increase the stability of the Zwitter ion, you will increase the carboxylic acid derivative's overall stability as a hybrid molecule, and that will decrease the rate of nucleophilic addition. So let me draw some specific examples for what I mean by Zwitter ionic resonance forms. Starting with the chloride. We know this one should be the least stable, it should have the least important Zwitter ionic resonance form. 
you produce that structure because you can donate a lone pair from the pi chloride donor to develop a pi bond between carbon and chlorine and a sigma bond only between carbon and oxygen. And it separates charge. Sometimes the structure can be OK, but not for the chloride. If you think about the orbital overlap, of course, developing a pi bond means the p orbitals must overlap with appropriate symmetry. However, the carbon chlorine bond is quite long, and these p orbitals are not even going to be the right size to overlap in a productive manner. So here you have this 3p orbital attempting to have pi type interaction with 2p on carbon. And they're just mismatched in terms of size, and they're too far away from each other because carbon chlorine bond is long and weak. So I'll say poor overlap. And they're far apart. Now it turns out the less that chlorine donates in, the less double bond character there means you're going to have a weaker carbon chlorine bond. And therefore, it's easier to cleave that bond. So saying the leaving group leaves fast in step two ends up being the same result as the bond being weak for addition in step one. Let's consider another. For example, the ester. The ester here, you can now push a lone pair to produce a zwitterion. And that shows that both oxygens are truly sp2 hybridized, because you always have pi type interaction between each oxygen with its neighboring sp2 carbon. And this pi interaction is pretty well developed. They are the correct symmetry and the correct size to overlap. So whereas the chloride resonance form was not important, meaning there is very little double bond character between carbon and chlorine, that bond is weaker, the ester's zwitterionic form is much more stable. Because now, you still have a full, full octet on all atoms. And you have good pi pi or pi overlap between carbon and oxygen p orbitals. That's why the ester is more stable. Because the oxygen donates more. There is less electrophilic character here at the ester carbonyl. And let's make this a little bigger. Compared to the chloride, it's not donating at all. So it's very easy for a nucleophile to go in and attack if there's not an electron donor that's effectively filling pi star. Let's consider one more. An amide. Nitrate is a great pi donor, the best. So once again, just like oxygen and carbon are the same size, oxygen and nit or carbon and nitrogen are the same size with two p orbitals that overlap well. So all of the above is true below for the amide and the ester. They're both quite stable. But now, nitrogen is even more basic, a worse leaving group, a better electron donating group, because it is less electronegative. The difference between the ester and the amide is not size dependent. They are the same size. You decrease electronegativity from 3.5 to 3, going from oxygen to nitrogen. So it's ele less electronegative, more comfortable donating electrons, and therefore more stable with positive charge, which means this resonance structure counts even more. In reality, for amides, the true molecule, the hybrid, is about equally uh, representative of each structure, 
zwitteriod and the neutral form. So amides have very important zwitteriodic resonant structures. And that has many implications for the lack of reactivity of the amide carbonyl carbon. It will also influence things like basicity and acidity. So I want to do a couple of examples next about how these reactions work in terms of which ones are favorable and which ones are not. First of all, if we take an amide, cyclic amide is a lactam, and if you were to treat this with sodium methoxide. Of course, methoxide has a nucleophilic oxygen with reactive lone pairs that can attack the carbonyl and do addition. And that is probably quite slow, leading to a tetrahedral intermediate. Analysis of the intermediate tells us well, there's two possible heteroatoms that could leave, O minus or N minus. And O minus is more stable with negative charge. It's a better leaving group. Or a weaker base. So elimination here is just going to result and reversion to the starting material. Or there is no reaction. Because we started with an amide, if we would have kept the alkoxy group, it would have made an ester. And esters are higher on the energy ladder than amides. And therefore, it stays at the amide. It stays at the bottom. So there's no net reaction. This would have been uphill. Do another example. This is an anhydride with two electrophilic carbonyl carbons. However, they are not equal in their electrophilicity. The one with a proton is less sterically hindered and has less electron donation compared to this isopropyl, which is donating to the carbonyl. So this one is more electrophilic. Asymmetric anhydrides react in the less hindered site faster. If I was to treat this with the same nucleophile, sodium methoxide, it would attack fastest at C1 to produce a tetrahedral intermediate. This tetrahedral can collapse to eliminate one of the two heteroatoms that can bear negative charge. The hydride, of course, is way too strong of a base to leave. O minus versus O minus, well, this one's going to be resonance stabilized. And when it leaves, it can donate electrons and share them with the adjacent electron withdrawing carbonyl. So carboxylates are less basic, better leaving groups compared to alkoxides, where this is resonance stabilized. And notice where we went. We started with an anhydride, and we made a formate ester and a carboxylate. Both of these products are lower on the energy ladder, much more stable, and less electrophilic in terms of their reactivity compared to the anhydride. So this reaction is quite exergonic.